my name is Shadi Gera and I'm with the Jagdalpur Legal Aid Group, known as Jagdalpur for short. Uh, Jagdalpur, as Amanath Pandey already said, it's the district headquarters of Pasta District, the division headquarters of Pasta Division. In South Chhattisgarh, it's also a conflict zone where there's a long-standing uh, conflict between left to insurgents and the police. Jagdalpur Legal Aid Group, uh, started in July 2013, was based out of Jagdalpur for the last, till the last month. And in the last month, we've been based out of uh, Bilaspur, Raipur, Delhi, Bombay, Indore, Bhopal, everywhere except in Jagdalpur because we've been evicted from there. So in the short time that I've been given, I'm going to try and tell you what we were trying to do and how we got evicted. What, so when we started, we just wanted to start with what do we mean by legal aid? The way the state defines it as pro bono representation, we thought we should go ahead, go make it broader, and figure out what exactly are the legal requirements. So a large part of our work there was actually on documenting what the legal requirements were. We started with undertried prisoners. I'll go over this bit really rapidly. We have a lot of data on this, and it's very interesting data, but I don't have the time to tell you. But let's go to the next slide. And we have three jails in Jagdalpur, and we start in, in Basta Division, and we started with looking at these three jails. Chhattisgarh has the distinction of having the most overcrowded prisons in the, all of India, the state of the uh, highest amount of overcrowding. Um, these are the figures as of 2013. And uh, you can see that in India, the overcrowding uh, on average is 118%, which means that where there's capacity of 100 prisoners, you have 118 prisoners. Uh, in Chhattisgarh, it's 261%. So it's way more. But when we look at the district jails, it's phenomenally higher. Um, Kankir district jail is 428% as of 200, 2013. We have figures for 2014 where it's crossed 600%. In a space of 65 prisoners, you have 420 prisoners. Um, and what this means for the prisoners, you can well imagine. Um, in Kanke prison, you have to sleep in shifts. There's not even space for all prisoners to sleep at the same time. At the same time, uh, that hours made so from one, from this much hour to this much hour, some prisoners sleep and then uh, they wake up and the others sleep. Um, so we were looking at causes for this um, um, overcrowding. Could it just be that we are a poor state and we are a poor district, so we just forgot to build prisons? So we looked at the capacity. What is our capacity for hosting prisons? And you can see from here that actually if you, um, what you see in some of those bars is the housing capacity. Compared to India, Chhattisgarh and Buster Division, there isn't that much difference. So it's not that we aren't building enough prisons in Buster, but look at the actual number of inmates. So this is, these are uh, figures that have been normalized to the population. So in India overall, you have 34 prisoners per lakh population. But in Basta, you have 78 prisoners per lakh population. Basta is a very sparsely populated um, area. And it's even worse when you actually look at where this conflict is happening in Basta and at, at the under uh, population. Go next. And just looking at the under trials per, per lakh population, um, you can see that where the conflict is in Dantewara, Dakshin Basta, where um, it includes this uh, district of Sukhman and Bijapur as well. Um, the numbers of under trial prisoners per lakh population are five times the national average, 21 compared to 105. So what's causing this intense, uh, I mean, why are we, uh, what's causing all this? Is it just that we are a conflict zone, so we're just like really rounding up people and putting them in jails? So we looked at the arrest figures. I don't think I have them here. But the arrest actually showed us the opposite, that it's not that we're arresting a lot of people, in fact, um, the amount of arrests per lakh population in Basta is actually lower than the national population, the national figures. So it's not that we're just rounding up people like crazy and putting them in jails. But what explains this very large number of prisoners in jails is simply that once people get into jails, they're not able, able to get out. So the influx is low, but the outgo is really, really and that's causing this really swelling up of numbers inside the jail. Um, so we looked at the duration of uh, time that prisoners are put in jail for. Next slide. And um, this is how it shows. Basically, 
Um, across India and across Chhattisgarh, the numbers are not very different. If you look at the first two bars, almost 90% of the prisoners are spending, of under trials are spending less than two years in jail. Um, that's the solid bar and the bar on top of it. But by the time you look at Dantewara and Jandarmu central jails, it's actually come down. And it's like, you know, more than 50% of our prisoners are, um, in fact, in Dantewara, more than 70% of prisoners are spending more than one year in jail. And there's a significant population that's spending five years in jail, uh, more than five years in jail. Um, we look at other things. We can just run through the next slides because it's going to take too long. Um, again, the kind of cases we looked at, we did RTIs in district jails. This is from Dantewara uh, district uh, court, sessions court. So we're really seeing a large number of group crimes. So here, for instance, in 2013, uh, cases disposed. Almost half of the cases disposed, uh, they have more than five named accused. And uh, we have 25% uh, uh, where there's more than 10 named accused. In fact, we have charge sheets where the 97 and 98 number of people who are named in those charge sheets is accused. Entire villages are being picked up and put as accused. Next slide. These are the kind of charges that also is very typical for conflict zone. The maximum number of charges are in the IPC section, um, Offices Against the Human Body. Arms Act, explosive substances, they're high, and these are from 2005 to 2013. They're increasing. But other crimes, NDPS is not there. I mean, what kind of a criminal court is this where there's no NDPS going on? Offices Against Property, not there. All you're seeing is really heinous crimes. Uh, next slide. And again, if you look at even offenses against the human body, it's all 302, 307. It's, we're really not seeing offenses against, uh, well, uh, crimes against women. It's not that crimes against women are not happening, but in the conflict zones, there's so much of this intense violence that those crimes are really getting suppressed. Um, this is again just showing the jail population. Um, in India, a third of the uh, under trial population is charged with murder or attempt to murder. But in Dandimara jail, 86% of the under trials are facing charges of 302 and 307. Um, and that, of course, means many things. Bail is really difficult to get. Next slide. Um, this shows just the amount of bail that you get in these um, courts over four years. Um, and uh, things like this. Go to the next slide. Uh, trials are taking longer. I, I, I have to run through these slides. Um, again, this is just showing the number of cases that were disposed in the first year of the institution, how they're declining from 2005 to 2013. Um, presentation is a problem for the next one. Um, so all this is happening basically overcrowded jails full of Adivasi prisoners uh, with really poor conditions, um, put for heinous crimes for really long periods of time not able to get out, and eventually when they do get the judgment, what are we seeing? This is the rate of complete acquittals from 2005 to 2013. If you put them all together, we have the acquittal rates of 96%. These are complete acquittal rates. So if you're talking of a case which has 10 accused, and they're charged with five sections each, this means that each of those 10 accused has been acquitted from each one of those five charges. And this is what we're seeing. So people are being put away for really long periods of time, in really bad conditions, not being given any relief, no bail, nothing, eventually only to be acquitted. But is this the kind of uh, justice that we want? Um, we just have to skip to the next five minutes, slides, I think. Just skip to them. So that is, uh, we can talk about at length about why this is happening. But um, I'm saying this was one area that we, um, just go ahead. <coughs> Yeah, this is really, yeah. So this was one area that we worked on, uh, documentation on under trial prisoners and their needs. Um, maybe if you've just done this documentation, you could still have been surviving. But in a conflict zone, the work of a legal aid lawyer doesn't stop there. Uh, we were pulled into other legal necessities as well. And this was when it came to documenting the atrocities by police and security forces. Um, and over the past few years, we have we were called, we were there in a conflict zone, we were called by villagers everywhere 
to help document various kinds of atrocities, which we landed. Sometimes it's to help file an FIR. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's helping with affidavits. Sometimes it's just mm -hmm. like the tell uthake lege hain, pata karo kahan pe hai. And we ended we ended up getting our, ourselves involved in many things we hadn't thought about. So these were just some of the cases we documented over the last uh, one and a half years. Um, there are fake encounters, the illegal detentions, this police beating, extradition killings, custodial torture. Um, go to the next one. And I think um, as the year rolled by, you must have all heard uh, right now that there is a Naxalite uh, mission 2016 that is being carried out in Basta, which a view of uh, taking out all Naxalites, but really translates on the ground as taking out all tribals instead. So the last few year, a few months have been really intense. And starting um, from, uh, in the middle you can see 19th to 24th October, we started documenting um, mass cases of sexual violence. So we started documenting cases where the troops were going in on an anti-Naxal operation and ended up terrorizing um, the entire village over there by destroying homes, throwing away the supplies, and engaging in mass sexual violence. Um, gang rapes, and disrobing, and just beating up women on that scale. And that, I think, is actually what led to our ouster. Um, we, this is where things be became really hot for us. And then I'm going to start about the persecution. So go to the next one. So the persecution for us started in many forms. The first one was by the Buster Bar Association. And the Buster District Bar Association took offense that we were not registered in the state and we were working in the state. So first they started by saying that uh, outside lawyers cannot work over here and started spreading all kinds of lies about us. This is actually from a police uh, press conference. He Bahari Bakilo ki forge kar rahi hai ki parody aiming at us. And there are, we were happy to hear that three of us could be called an army, but still, um, this is the kind of stuff that started coming in papers. Next one. Uh, okay. uh, so the uh, Buster Bar Association took out a, um, a resolution saying that we cannot practice in those courts. Um, this was in October. We challenged it in the Bar Council. The Bar Council gave us, gave us interim relief and said we shall, we shall be continued to practice over there. So then they passed yet another uh, resolution. Okay, go again. Um, so after we got relief from the Bar Council, the Bar, Buster Bar Association put yet another resolution saying that they will not allow any local law to stand with us. So now the Advocates Act allows lawyers um, enrolled anywhere in the country to practice anywhere. But the local high courts can make regulation. One of the co regulations of the, of the Chhattisgarh High Court is that when a lawyer not registered in the state practices, they have to get a local lawyer to sign on the memo. So up till now we had no problems, but the Buster Bar Association said that and none of our members will sign on to their memo. Um, this is what they uh, wrote. And not only that, when this uh, was uh, passed, they actually said something, I don't know if you can read, Bahari Vakil, which they basically said that uh, there's a lot of anger against this legal aid group. If they continue to practice over here, there may be an unpleasant incident against them, and they themselves will be responsible for it. So there's an open threat that came out to us. In addition to the Buster Bar Association, there were vigilante groups that, again, were being raised by the police. Next. Um, OK, so this is actually of just uh, last week. I actually got myself transferred um, to the Chhattisgarh Bar Council because if the problem the local bar was having with me that was not in the Chhattisgarh Bar Council, so I got myself transferred. I went there after I got myself transferred. And then I was still here out in the court. And I was told that it's OK, you are uh, if you're still an outsider because you're from <coughs> Delhi. Why are you coming over here? Why are you doing things for free? And why are you doing Naxalite cases? So it wasn't just a question of uh, uh, registration. It was uh, a lot of other things as well. So this is just as of last week, uh, where again I was held out and not allowed to go into the court at all. Um, 
Then there was there's something called the Samajik Ekta Manch that has also come out recently. It's a vigilante group of people in Jagdalpur. And uh, they, uh, I don't know if many of you followed what happened to journalist Malini Subramaniam, who was also in Jagdalpur, our friend, and she was uh, writing reports for scroll.in. And they were the ones who carried out her house and did violence. We helped her file an FIR, which uh, actually did not get filed the way we wanted to, but we still. So then the Samajik Ekta Manch took out press releases against us. And here, this is their press release where they're threatening us that, um, in my legal aid, Namak Yoha Sansta bhi shamil hai, jo ki naksali mamalo mein jail mein band khunkhar naksaliyo ko sahyog pohun chate hai. So we were then made their target. They came after us and said that we are naxalite lawyers and they're going to oppose us. Um, next. Uh, then there were effigies burnt for, off us in the local market. Um, that's um, this. Take next one. Uh, they, they took out uh, press releases saying that we uh, are immoral and hum hawaiyatra karte hain. Alshan banglo mein rehte hain ki har bade shehar mein hamare bangle hain and we are all women. So hum we drink foreign liquor, videshi daru pite hain. And that was coming in the local media against us all the time. Um, so there was this whole thing that went on. Go to the next one. And then, of course, what really got us evicted was direct pressure by the police. And this is what happened between three days, 17th of February to 20th of February. Basically, the police picked up our uh, landlord. And he's a driver by profession, a, a very nice gentleman of very modest means. They impounded his car and told him that he will not be able to drive anymore and earn his living unless he evicted us. He said, okay, I will give them a notice, but by law I have to give them one month's notice. They said, not one month, give, get them out in one week. When he came back, when he came back, he was kept for many hours in the thana. When he came back very late at night, 2 a.m. in the morning, he called us and he told us that. He said, don't worry, you've been very good to us. We don't want anything to happen to you because of us. We'll get out in seven days. The next day he was picked up again and said seven days is too long, get them out by tomorrow. We said, well, we can't go in one day, at least give us two days. So uh, he negotiated for two days for us. The Samaji Ekta Manch came and uh, made a protest against our, our, our house. In this time, we called everybody. We called him the collector, we went to the commissioner, we called the chief secretary, we called the DGP, the special DGP. On our behalf, even the CM was talked to. But everybody said, oh, this is terrible. But the best they could do was to get his car released, but only after he gave assurance that he would be out latest by 20th February. Over the next two days, uh, we were virtually sieged by the police on all sides. Um, and our landlords would be called by the hour by the police to say, are they out yet? Are they out yet? And eventually, our, the woman who used to cook for us, the police visited her house. The lawyers who were working with us they were uh, their how they were visited by the police. Our clients were called up by the police. So eventually, on 20th, we had to wrap up and go. And even after that, they instituted a police complaint against us in Jagdalpur. And we thought, okay, fine, we're not living in Jagdalpur, but maybe we can still go once in a while to look at our cases uh, in a very, in a hurried manner. We had to pass up our cases to other people. Okay. Um, so I was there last week. I was helping Sony Sori because she's also facing the police wrath at this time. I was in her house. They came to know that I was there. So um, there was this dharna that was taken yesterday. And this is a picture from the dharna of yesterday. Naxali Shalni Gera Bastar So from outside lawyer, I have become a Naxalite lawyer and now a Naxalite Minister. And this is the situation of Bastar Bastar.